Anthony, Scott, how are you? Oh, you're on mute, Scott. I'm well. Thank you, Travis. Hey, Travis, what did you think the other night? Uh, I guess we need a transportation department. That was the uh, that was the theme of the evening. No doubt. I thought it uh, it was it was it was okay. It went went well. Uh, it was not surprising. It was not as uh, I wish more people would have attended. Uh, I do appreciate. I think you were the one that mentioned at the end, since we had some extra time, if people just wanted to freestyle and ask questions, that was great. Yeah, the uh, transfer, and I, I haven't looked, I guess the transportation department would be under the Board of Public Service? It's what, that's what it would, that's probably where it would fall because it's, um, you know, it's where the streets department and some of these other ones are, I believe. Uh huh. So, all right. Well, one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about um, to see, it seems to me that we should, as an as a group, a public hearing a month from now in February, March, and April to solicit input and begin to say, here's what we're working on, I think. Yeah. And uh, and Dwight had a, that recommendation of breaking it out by work groups. I think I'm in favor of both of those. Yeah. So do we want to make a motion and ask for a vote via email, which I was told we could do? We can do that for the entire commission. Yeah. Uh, that would make sense. Yeah. It's a great idea, actually, Scott. Great. All right. Well, I will send an email saying that that's what we came up with. And, and I'll just make it the same Tuesday or, or what was it? Monday. Right? No, it was Tuesday of each month. So and let's, you know, see if we can arrange a public hearing. Um, and then. Uh, with, you know, that breakout section. Yeah. I think that would be helpful for us. So. I would agree. All right. Great. And then one thing I started to think about is, and, and I spent years, I mean, a dozen years of my life working in politics and I ran political campaigns. Mm -hmm. And the, the somebody the other night, um, one of the League of Women Voters affiliated groups said, how are you going to put these things on the ballot and package them yeah. so people will vote? And the other thing is that the while we can do, I think we can come up with a strategy that will be hard to adjudicate in public, but yeah. we, can, we can do that. But it uh, it's gonna need some money, and do we want to then take that and go? You know, ask the mayor's office. Could we talk to you know? How would you feel about us talking to a Rosetta, you know, Rosetta Okinson of Mo Political or yeah. some? to put together a campaign committee and some fundraising. So. You know, that's, uh, I left, I left the uh, public hearing with that very same thought is we can have all of, you know, whatever the number of amendments are, one, three, 15, 30, individually labeled, individually put forward as a bundle, but where's the public information campaign? How do, how do we educate the public on this? And, you know, how do we even, I mean, to another extent, how can we get some polling as to whether, you know, the things that are being uh, suggested have have legs or not? And I realize we have zero budget and zero infrastructure uh, to make that happen. My concern with going to the mayor's office uh, or really anybody that's in a current seat of power in the elected in, within the city government is if there are things that are uh, part of this uh, part of the recommendations that they don't agree with, what uh, or even if they do, you know, even if they do allocate funds or identify funds for it, is that seen as them endorsing 
these and uh, these recommendations in a certain way? And does that taint the recommendations or politicize the recommendations more than they need to be? I, I think that's a, a very good point. And given that, do you think, should we ask the chair to form a subcommittee who will look at electoral options and come back to the group with campaign? I mean, I yeah. talked to Annie Rice, who's a friend of mine, and I've supported yeah. her over the years. And she said that she ran the campaign that won by 22 votes or 28 votes. And she said it almost killed her. And, <laughs> you know, and she said it, you know, it very easily could have lost. And without money, that's always a chance, you know. Right. So, but, yeah. So do you think that's, we should? I think that'd be a good recommendation to the chair. And we could, you know, really essentially say that it came out of, you know, one, the conversation, the the <coughs> the testimony from, uh, I believe it was Nancy from the League of Women Voters uh, mm -hmm. brought this question up. And I think the commission does need a subcommittee that looks at, you know, the electoral process for these. Good. All right. Well, I will, I will put together an email on both of those issues, copying all the commissioners, you guys will obviously, it'll look like it'll come from all three of us, as long as Anthony's okay with both of those, but putting it to the group one for an actual vote. So, mm -hmm. all right. As I'm working, man, we're gonna run out of time here in this uh, election crazy year. It, uh, right. Yeah. Anthony, what do you think? I'm on board. I was driving, so I was on. Uh, oh, uh, camera. Right. I've been here the entire time. Sounds good to me. Be careful. Yeah. All right. Good. All right. And then what do we, other than those two items, which I'll write over the weekend and send, what do we want to have to present at our next meeting? Let me pull up our do, spreadsheet here. Do we have the final list from Christine, or Director Gracia, for the upcoming meetings that we have and who's going to be? Okay. So we, can, if we had that, we could announce that. Who yeah, that would be great. All right. <laughs> Are you guys going to attend any of those special meetings that have been called here? Uh, I can't. The ones that are in person, I can't attend because I'm traveling all next week. But the ones that are virtual, I'm going to try to make. Yeah, I'm doing I'm the a mix of some I can and can't based upon the the timing. I may have to leave early for one as well. Okay. Very good. Yeah. I got to be honest, I, I'll, maybe I'm getting old, but I have a hard time importing the information from the city email into my Outlook and all of that. They, it's not just you, it's not age. I, I emailed the, the commission staff asking them to resend the uh, calendar request. Was once on, on, on my Google Calendar, I've got it set, but I, I've had a hard time some weeks with, with the synchronization. So, you know. yeah. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Thank you for making me feel better. <laughs> So, all right. So, well, so that maybe there's the third thing is I'll I'll send a note to Christine then as well. Just say, please give us the list of meetings so that we can report on them. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Cool. And wait, wait. Um, the, and, and the, the amendments that I'd been recommending, I'll take a shot at writing one or two of those. Sheena seemed to think, because she, I guess, did she call you guys and have a private meeting? She called I me. A, she didn't call me, but I might have been out of town. It might have been when I was out of town. Yeah, we, I mean, we had a really good conversation. And I said, you know, what do you what do you think? And and she said, well, why don't you guys take a shot at writing them, and then they can turn them into legal language. So okay, 
Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. I did. Um, I don't know if, if you found it, uh, Travis. I do have a copy of the Kansas City Charter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, great. Not, and I oh, can I didn't see our it. official email and shoot that to everybody. That okay. would be great. Is there a lot to look, to learn from there, Anthony? I think there's some wording we could take in terms of I just you know the initial comment you just the comment you just made to look at some languaging, yeah, and then all as opposed to having to kind of recreate uh, languaging or how to come up with it on our own. So I think that's the most helpful thing that I saw. Yeah, and I'm really curious. I, I wasn't able to. I should have looked at the charter. I was looking everywhere on the city's website. Should have looked at the charter to see how they do their at large uh, elections because they uh, they are at large from a district, they represent a district, but they're a citywide for each one of those. So take a look at the charter when you send it over. Yeah, the, uh, and Travis, were you in the room when that that one gentleman stood up the other night and said, I grew up in Kansas City and- Yeah. Then that, yeah, it's like, cool. yeah. It, it was like the most damning summation, Anthony. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, they had 125,000 residents when I was a kid. St. Mm -hmm. Louis had 800, and now Kansas City has 800,000 residents, and St. Louis is heading towards 125. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Well, I will go ahead and, and get those three items put together, an internal call or email to Christine about the meetings I'll, and I'll put out a vote on the public hearings and then uh, ask about putting together a campaign subgroup. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for sending that over. Uh, Anthony. You are welcome. See, it's, it's all here. Yeah. Hmm. Required signatures, much more simple, plain language. Very much, yeah. Gotten a lot easier, too. For the piece in terms of go back up, okay, at large. So you live in the district, but you have voters who sign your petition who are from the entire city, and that puts you on the at large ballot. Yes. That's okay. Right. Prior to this, we placed on a private. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, in reality, if you're, if I am in District Five, let's say, uh, I can either run for the district seat or as an at-large member of the council, yes. right? It just depends on how many signatures I am able to collect and what my aspirations are. Do I wanna run, do I run to represent the district as a, as a district seat or the at-large member? Okay. And are they um, limited? Could everybody run at-large? I, probably so. Hmm. It just says here, how to petition, but I'd be nominated rather. I'll read. I'll read through this uh, and see if there's any any more clarity that I can get from it. But it, this is helpful. I also like how their uh, how their charters laid out on the website too. <laughs> yeah. Very simple. 
You know, it's one of the things that people often will talk about related to St. Louis is a city our size, a city our size needs this structure, needs this structure. But the, the thing is, our the city this size has been shrinking. Uh, you know, we, and, if, and as, as one of the gentlemen put it at the at the hearing, you know, when that 2030 census comes out, if we get any smaller, it's, you know, we might be a township <laughs> by, by then if we're not if we're not careful. Um, and and so you know I think one of the things that we need to that I like to think about as we're as we're putting this doing this work is you know we want to be somewhat aspirational for a city that could grow again but we also have to have a functioning government for the city that is at any given state at any given right. time. I I wonder it would be interesting to ask at what size do we begin to get less federal match and assistance? Mm. I wonder if that matters. Well, I had, I had thought that it was if we dip below uh, 300,000 and we're not there yet, but we're, real, we're pretty damn close. Hmm. Do you think that, yeah, I, that uh, well, the 2030 census, it, uh, we still got a little time, so. Yeah. So I think they're, they have a city auditor in KC, right? Yes, auditor, clerk, manager. But they are appointed by the council. Wow. The council appoints the manager. Yeah, because the mayor, uh, I believe the mayor is resides as you know oversees the council as the council president. Uh, I don't think they have a uh, a council yeah, president. They work together. Yeah. So it's it's much less of a uh, you know a strong executive branch. The the council has has quite a bit of power in this model. It's a council more of a council manager city manager model. Do we have an ethics commission in city government? Uh I don't remember reading that. Do you, Travis? What did oh, you ask, Scott? An, do we have an ethics commission? Uh, I don't believe so. And I, I think that's one of the things that I, I, somebody brought it up uh, at the hearing, and I've heard it brought up before, and that is in a lot of our structure, and we'll use the comptroller's office as an example, a lot of our structure, those that are in, have operational control also have oversight control. Uh, which, you know, runs the risk of, you know, things not being reported. Mm -hmm. Well, their section on departments and offices is much more streamlined. Uh, they also have uh, eight-year term limits. Really? 
for the yeah. council members? Yeah. Council and mayor. Where are you guys on that? I'm not generally a big term limits guy, but if somebody brought uh, I mean, I, I think of all like if with the amount of change that we want to <laughs> that we want to try to move forward, I think that might be, you know, a straw that breaks some people's backs. And I I am a I mean, I I you know, I came into St. I came to St. Louis in the latter half of the Slay administration, which was, you know, on the followed the Shamel dynasty. Uh you know, I, I'm not a big fan of political dynasties either, whether they're an individual or a family. Uh, so, and not that that gets solved by term limits because that doesn't address the, the family dynasty issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I mean, I, I don't think we need to, I wouldn't necessarily want to put need to push or think we need to push for term limits and there's enough other wholesale change that looks like it might surface. I would I would feel better about not having it. Yeah. You know, yeah. But the, make it easier for people to vote and they can create their own term limits if they will. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I guess in St. Louis, you either get voted out or a federal indictment, whatever happens first. So. <laughs> both at the same time. Or they, they, or both at the same time. So it looks like while their finance committee reports to the council, they are independent, eh? Wow. So th the finance department truly functions as the chief financial officer for the city. Mm -hmm. They get audited by the auditor. So that's that's a pretty good way to do it. So you've got somebody looking, they're checking on each other. Eleven weeks after April is is that July? So May, June, yes, it would be. Yeah. Okay, so primary in April, general in July. Hmm. I wonder why that is. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a weird one. I, you know, when, when we had a discussion last time about maybe including some at-large seats, um, I'd be curious to see, you know, the Kansas City model has a very, has a like almost a logic system to it, right? There's the at-large seats are overlay the district seats, and that's how they decided how many at-large seats they have. Uh, I'd be, you know, we talked about maybe adding one or two at large seats. We also talked about maybe having the, the president of the council elected by the body. Uh, I would I would want us to think about like, what is our rationale for the at large seats if they don't follow the, like a ward overlay? And so the at large, so they'd be elected at large, but would they have an actual district that they represent as well? Which is how it would be, and that's how it is in, in Kansas City, but I think we, you know, looks like some discussion. We had discussion here about 
having at large seats, but not necessarily representing a district or a ward. Perhaps looking at the system used for us on the Charter Commission, mm -hmm. where there were three from, there's some geographical boundaries set, kind of dividing mm -hmm. the city in three parts. Um, I'm not sure how relevant that will be in perpetuity, but at least for right now, that may be a way to consider. Is it mm -hmm. one per section? We, we we have three for each. We have nine of us, but is it one right. for each to three more? Is it two for each, six more? Um, but that, that may be a way to consider why they chose that logic for us and then look at that. Sure. The awards would not be a good way to determine. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it could be, you know, uh, north, central, and south. Uh, I think one of the, you know, one of the challenges with that is we it wouldn't be an equal distribution of population, mm -hmm. which oftentimes representatives are based on, you know, some level of representation of, of a population or percentage mm -hmm. of a population. Um, so we may have to work through that. But I, I like those geographic some of the thought behind that, the geography. So would you have 14 council members and three at large, or would you have 14 council members, three of whom are elected at large, but still represent a specific district? Uh, well, if we... We would have, I think it'd be a heavy lift to try to change the number on the Agreed. city council or the board of aldermen, uh, or even change like how representation works. I was just thinking if we had, uh, so if we have 14 wards right now, uh, that unfortunately that doesn't divide evenly by three, but it does divide evenly by two. Mm -hmm. So maybe we have, we take the seven southernmost wards and the seven northernmost wards, and we essentially have uh, an at-large for each one of those. Because uh, that, way we're, that way we're capturing population because the ward should be divided up so that each, you know, current alderman has a, uh, a the same number of, this represent, represents the same population, a similar population, theoretically. So right now you've got um you've got 12, 14, 11 that are true north, although 11 sort of comes down a bit. Mm -hmm. you know, well, let's see if I can pull this up. Get to get a real size here and see if I can share this. Yeah, there you go. Uh yeah, Anthony put one up for us. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It look in the north. Yeah. It looks like if we're if we're using Highway sixty four. Right. That that will, but that cuts in the middle of Ward Nine. Um, so it cuts in the middle of Ward 9, but it could still be, like, that would still, Ward 9 would be on the north. Mm -hmm. It's kind of 1 through one through 8, I would say, our south, primarily. Okay. And then yeah. nine, through, 9 through 14. Where's 14? I see 13. Oh, there's 14. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so 1, 2, from... 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 below Highway 64. So down, oop, that's not what I want to do. And then 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So just five. So there's only five of, or six above, eight below. Yeah, eight below. Uh, so I think we, I think it would still be better to try to divide the wards, the, the population of the wards into two buckets. How, mm -hmm. how that line looks, uh, just so that we have, you know, represent, you know, an at-large seat for uh, one, you know, we call at-large seat for one through seven, at-large seat for eight through 14, or however these get drawn up. And then the question is like, why? Like, why do we want that? What is the role of that at-large seat? Mm -hmm. And I think the answer is that if you had one from the north side of the city and one from the south side of the city, 
those folks, because they are elected citywide, couldn't just have narrow parochial ward wide concerns. They'd have yeah. to have citywide concerns and run everywhere. Yeah. D does that cause uh, like mental reinforcement of a divided city? That's what uh, I was thinking. But I, I got to be honest, even even when like Baden, which was, you know, 25, 30 years ago, was solidly white up in North St. Louis, you still, I mean, they were still, if you lived on the South side, it's like a 25 minute drive to yeah. get up there and vice versa, you know? So I just think geographically it's, it's pretty disparate, so. Well, I mean, what if we, I mean, what, I would, I would rather see the, uh, I'd rather see the at-large model follow uh, Kansas City's, but that's probably, I'd say that'd be beyond the scope of this commission. And maybe that's for a future, like, ward realignment type of discussion. Because to add 14 more people... Actually, my thought was drop down to seven, seven wards. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Redistrict. Yeah. That's a whole nother <laughs> yeah. year's planning to get to that point. Yeah. But it does make, that makes sense though. Especially with the population decrease. Yeah. I mean, even, I mean, I, the, the example I would often give is I can't, where I, I lived in Fresno, California, which had a population of half a million and seven city councilors. And then I moved to St. Louis with a population of 300,000 and 28 city count, basically 28 city councils. Wow. Like wow. what they, you know, the, the sphere, is, the, the footprint of representation, which is the population they each represented was incredibly small. And even at 14, it's still relatively small. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I like that we've gone down to 14. I like that we've increased the, the compensation for our uh, city councilors and board of alders uh, because I think it allows us to attract uh, a higher caliber of uh, people to public service. You really can't do that at a $35,000 a year job. Mm -hmm. um, or if you do, you have a person that, you know, maybe have conflicts of interest or something along those lines. But if, you know, a future evolution, I would love to see us reduce down to keep the board of aldermen at 14, but have seven wards or seven districts. Mm -hmm. But that would, again, I think that's that's beyond the scope of this this commission. One thing you guys maybe have experienced this too, the the level of quality and thoughtfulness of the current 14 is so much higher than oh. when it was 28. On yeah. Average. Yeah. I would fully agree. Uh, so if we we can still have discussion around uh, around the at large, uh, but how are we feeling about the the president of the council or president of the board of alders being elected by the body? And how do you think either Megan, the board of aldermen, or the general population would feel about that? Do they feel like would they feel that that's taking power out of the the populace and the voters? Uh, it, I, it, it's I an like, anomaly. It really is an anomaly here. Yeah. I I like having a citywide president of the council, mm -hmm. but I'm not. I'm it's I'm not going to be upset if they're voted on by the council itself. Yeah. See? I think that there could be, there will be some pushback forward, but I think the the advantages of having to have some internal cohesion, uh, relationships built within the team. Now, of course, yeah. there there are risks to that, right? We're building alliances, which may or may not be beneficial for the city, but ideally, you're building healthy coalitions up front, which are good for the city. Yeah. Yeah. 
And if that if that role, like right now, it, to me, one of the main reasons why it makes sense to have the president elected by the president of the board elected by the 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 city, the citizens, is because that's one of three voices on the ENA. Uh, but if the ENA didn't, and those are three elected people, right? There's a comptroller, the mayor, and the president of Port of Alders that are sit on the ENA. If the ENA didn't exist, then it almost removes that the necessity to have a a citywide elected person at, at the as the president of the board of aldermen. Yeah. So just sort of thinking through a war game, right? Mm -hmm. Is that so it's it's fair to say that 14, 11, 12, and 13 are wards that are majority African American. Yeah. And I think it's probably pretty fair to say that Ward 2, Ward 4, Ward 5, Ward 10 are primarily, vastly majority white. So if all the African American council members said, we're going to be a block, and somebody could coalesce those four primary white wards, they'd still need to reach out, right? Mm -hmm. You couldn't, or, in, or if you had multiple, um, you could have a situation where one of those blocks could win, but then, you know, your sort of central wards, eight, 14, seven, six, that might be more of a progressive mm -hmm. slate. So, you know, I, I think it, it would be an interesting set of trades, and I think you'd end up in the right place. I mean, yeah. Hmm. Be interested to see where the well, how it would work. So, who would be if if the board elected their own president? Who would be the president today? Probably Megan. Yeah. Or Sh or Shamim, Clark Hubbard, maybe. Both of them, I think, have yeah. respect from everybody. So. Yeah, and I was just think I was thinking Megan because the the work she did to get the progressive caucus elected. Uh -huh. uh, they would probably support her. And she hasn't made many mistakes. So, you know, I don't think there's been conflict with her in the in the role at this point. I think she's done a great job, actually. So Best communicator by far. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So, Anthony, where are you coming down? Are you saying that it should be citywide or should it be elected by the council? For the president? Yeah. Elected by the council. What I'm what I'm processing is this bicameral approach and how to get the citywide folks in there in a way that is equitable. The ward model would work the best. We don't want 14 more people. Oh, I mean the at-large discussion? Yeah, large, yeah. 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 Yeah, perhaps they're... Travis, are you in favor of the president being elected by the council? Yeah, yeah. All right. Do we want to put for, forth a suggested amendment to that effect? Sure. Uh, the one question I would ask, because it will probably come up, and I think we discussed this when we last met, let's use Megan as an example or whomever else. If they are elected by the body, they still represent their district also, correct? Yes. Just, okay. like, just like the Speaker of the Speaker House. Speaker of the House. Yep. Okay. That makes sense. All right. And this is where we, you know, we really, when we look at bundling these together, you know, this, there's like an if this, then that. This doesn't work if ENA stays 
in place. Uh, like, so we have to, you know, think about how these are all put together and, and are, is it an entire slate of amendments or do we, and this is, like you said, Scott, maybe putting a subcommittee together that looks at, you know, how to package these for the electorate. But, um, you know, we can't, we can't dismantle one thing and not accept another thing and then sure. the system breaks again or remains broken. Yeah, I mean, I think you could easily roll the three or four election based amendments mm -hmm. all into one and just yeah. say, you know, greater electoral freedom and, and responsibility and put three or four of them together. I, that kind of makes some sense. It gets a little dicier elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but if if you could have a second one that said reforming the Board of Aldermen by calling it a city council, Mm -hmm. electing the president through the council and then establishing at large. If Anthony can figure out how we can get two at large representatives here. To, hey. Hey. And Anthony, is it maybe three at large representatives? To Travis's point, 14 is not easily visible by three. Yeah, that's true. That's when the question comes in. How do we decide which three wards and then what, what group has four and why, is, why does the group have four and then have three? Mm -hmm. um, and then the earlier point about it reinforcing um, current divisions within the city as opposed to very clean cut. Every ward has two, one for, one for the ward, one for the city. That's very clean and consistent. Um Yeah, what it's if, not even it's not even divisible by four nicely. <laughs> right. What if you said all the odd or all the even number wards were elected at large? Then you'd get some pretty good spread across the city. So you'd have seven at large and seven from distinct areas. So if we if we say all the even are at large and all the odd are district, then that would mean like uh, Rasheen Aldridge out of the 14th ward would be a citywide at large, and uh, you know, whoever I can't remember who's in the 11th. I think it's is that Kara? Uh, no, Kara's eight, I think. Right? Oh, Kara's eight. Yeah, I can't remember who 11 is. Yeah, but uh, she 11 would, would be, be a large. district. I, yeah, I, I think that that I don't know if that works. I don't hate it, but I don't know if it works. So you'd have, so if you did the odd ones, you'd have 13, 11, 9, 3, 1, and 5. So you would have 3 south, 1 seriously central, 1 quasi central, and quasi north. So you'd have two quasi north, two north, one fully central, and four south, right? So I think it also makes like when we think about campaign finance, it makes running those elect like running elections if you're in an at large ward versus a district ward, you know, imbalanced and inequitable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the idea though. Um I was trying to think like could it rot could it rotate like uh yeah. you know uh one you know if you know one term it's a at large, one term it's a district. I mean I think that gets might get overly complicated. Um Okay. What what if you did that, but unlike Kansas City, only your ward voted for you? So when the first rotation odd numbers are elected from their ward represent their ward and then on the opposite rotation then odd numbers elect someone from their ward represents the entire city in terms of financing it's a, it's the same I know, but, but but anthony at that point you're uh that means you're not doing any even though you represent the city you, you were elected by the people that are in your ward and so there's really no uh incentive incentive to really represent the entire city or even 
try to get buy-in from the entire city. Yeah. I mean, we could say like we, Ward 11, uh, this term, it's a, it's a district-wide seat. And so it's elected by your district. And the next term, it's a citywide seat and it's elected citywide. Then it's district, city, like, I mean, but I get, that gets a little confusing, but there could be, and then they could just, they could alternate that way. Mm -hmm. So if you're a, if I'm, if I'm the alder or the council member from the 11th ward and I serve two terms, maybe I serve a term representing my district and then I live in my district and the next term I get elected, I have to do more work because it's a citywide seat. Uh, and I represent the, uh, you know, the entire city from, from my district. Hmm. that ebb and flow would cause people to think a little bit more holistically. And even when they're run, like, even when they are, uh, you know, in the, in the old fifth, uh, Tamika Hubbard was my, was my alder before uh, Rasheen was in there. And uh, if she ever had to think about getting citywide buy-in, but people looked at how she treated her own ward, it would be very difficult. So it's almost like you have to be a good steward for your own ward if you want a chance to win a citywide seat. So Travis, walk through what you're thinking again there, please. So uh, odd and even wards would alternate. So in 2024, uh, ward 11 would be a district seat and Ward 14 would be a citywide seat. And then in 2028, Ward 11 would be a citywide seat and Ward 14 would be a district seat. That would keep everybody on their toes. Because if you were elected just district, the entire time you'd have to think about, I'm going to be up for re-election in four years. And so I need to look. Convince convince the city that I deserve this job. Yeah. Hmm. And there could be people who run against you who have done a better job of making outreach outside. I mean, that would be yeah. interesting. Okay. I'll be honest, you guys are kind of convincing me on this one. I, I don't hate any of these ideas. I think I think it'd be great, actually. I mean, as long as their constituents are getting the same level of service and now that they've got assistance and that sort of thing, I think it is a lot better. So Yeah, I mean, and we're actually we're not reducing. I mean, I think from a, a constituent services standpoint, you know. If I'm citywide elected in the four, in the eleventh ward, it's not like I really quote unquote have to serve the entire city because all the other wards have either a citywide elected seat a person or they have a represent or they're represented by a district by a district elected seat. So I think those are those those mechanics still work. It's uh, I think it just gets people to. I honestly think if you haven't done a good job within your ward. Uh, then how are you going to convince people outside of your ward that you deserve to have that job again? So it, mm. it is thinking about, uh, and, it, and this kind of, this could break down the, the issues of aldermanic courtesy where things just aren't rubber stamped because there might be some competition for you know, just doing a better job and holding each other to better standards. And vice versa. Right. If I've done a good job for the city, I'll be reelected for my ward. I think it works yeah. both, both ways. Mm -hmm. And I also think it gets us a better pool of candidates for mayor because you have more people that have run citywide elections and have citywide name recognition. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a very good point. Which yeah. puts more pressure on the mayor to do a good job to get reelected because he or she will be competing against half of the folks that just won a citywide election. <laughs> that's good. Well, I would, again, it would continue to in, improve the level and quality of the candidates. Yeah. Or, yeah, no question. And I would imagine there would be some level of pay disparity uh, between a person that's a district-wide elected and a city-wide elected. Um, 
whether it's you know a five thousand or ten thousand dollar a year difference, just like there's a pay discrepancy if you happen to serve as the president of the board of of uh, uh, the president of the council. I think just given the kind of the range of responsibilities, um, mm -hmm. I I wouldn't want to necessarily break it into a an upper house and lower house of the of the Congress, right? Uh, well, I think if you said if you're elected citywide, your salary or staff doesn't increase, but your expense account doubles sure. for those four years. So you, uh, yeah. you know, to gas money and stuff like that, that actually would make some sense. You know, another layer we could put on this, uh, I, I don't know. Another layer though is what if the president of the board of aldermen or president of the council can only be elected from a pool of the citywide council members. Okay. So in me. essence, you are still picking somebody that has won a citywide election. Mm -hmm. hmm. I just, again, that might create some, some disparity though, between like upper house and a junior house of the, and I don't, maybe that's not as much of a good idea. I, I, I strike, strike that. It would mean you could only be president of the council for four years. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Not, I don't a, strike that. not a bad idea. No, <laughs> true. Yeah. It, yeah, it, not... it forces cohesion, more long range planning, and alliance building, but also I think it will work best if we are, and that's not our purview, but the other group who's working on the departments to streamline the Department of Transportation, the uh, um, uh, th those those departments, so that a lot of bottlenecks we see today, people blame the older person. Really, it's various city departments that are not handling those responsibilities. So, if all the changes work together, I think that could work well. All right. I like I like joining this group. We have fun. This is a good group. This is this is the this is the citywide guys here, right? <laughs> right. Just, yeah. right. So so Scott, do we need to do we need to run, I guess, once we enact this legislation for office? <laughs> are we are we strategizing for well not me? One thing I'm really thinking about here is I think that one of the amendments we should consider is that the Charter Commission not be 10 year, but be continue. Mm. The, yeah, I think and have annual meetings or something like that. I just think 10 years is just too long. Now, but and maybe it's maybe there's a term there's there's term limits on serving on the charter commission uh i mean because as much as i love you all yeah. i can't do this much <laughs> a one-year commitment is what was really appealing to me uh but I, I scott i get your point about there should be ongoing review of our of our city charter and uh and maybe it's Maybe it's just banking. Maybe the 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 amendments only happen on an every decade basis, but there the commission sticks stays around for all ongoing process improvement and review. And going when you when you mentioned that you know how do we get the ed, the the community the city uh, electorate educated on this and like ongoing you know opportunities for the city to the residents to voice their their thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Anthony, the other night, we literally spent the entire hour talking about a transportation. Oh, really? Committee. Oh, man. Department okay. of Transportation. Yeah. God. I understand why. Yeah. Sure. I did too after after the other night. Okay. Yeah. So we're very clear that what the League of Women Voters found. And we heard is that we need to create this streamlined department. Okay. So, uh, so just kind of with that, I just began to think big picture about how 
you take this to voters or a campaign group or you know political consultants would and maybe it's we're going to have three issues that we take to the voters through charter amendment public safety greater financial accountability and electoral empowerment hmm. so and kind of roll the amendments up into those three categories something like that say those again public safety financial accountability and what was the last one electoral empowerment okay your buckets hmm All right. Well, guys, this was a great hour. Thank you both. Um, yeah, really helpful. Um, Anthony, we missed you the other night. That that was live streamed, right? It was, yeah. Okay. So I will see the recording before our meeting on the early February. February the fifth. Okay. There we go. Okay. Okay. All right, gentlemen. gentlemen. We'll talk to y'all later. Have Take a great care. weekend, guys. Bye. Take care. Bye bye.